Here we'll start talking about bases and orthonormal bases, and eventually we'll get to everyone's favorite orthonormalization process, and that is Gram-Schmidt. So the first thing is a sort of a concept idea. Let's take a look at i, j, and k, those unit vectors in R3. What can you say about those three vectors? Well, look at i and j. i is 1, 0, 0. j is 0, 1, 0. If you take their dot product, i dot j, you get 0. All right, do it for j and k, right? 0, 0, 1. Take the dot product of those two vectors, you also get 0. Take the dot product of the first and last, you get 0 plus 0 plus 0. So no matter which way you do it, the dot products are all 0, which means they are orthogonal. Now look at the length of each vector. The magnitude of vector i is 1, right? That's why it's a unit vector. It's one unit in the i direction. That's one unit in the j direction. That's one unit in the k direction. So it's also a basis that's not only orthogonal, but it is normal because each of the vectors are one unit long. So we call this an orthonormal basis. Orthonormal basis. So each vector is perpendicular or orthogonal and one unit long. If that's the case, then it's an orthonormal basis. Okay, sometimes when a basis is an orthonormal basis, good things happen. We can use them in theorems. We can use them in applications. And so it might be interesting to know when something is an orthonormal basis. So let's take a look at this basis. I've got 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. That's my first vector. And the second vector is negative 2 over root 5, 1 over root 5. So is this an orthonormal basis? Well, the first thing I'll do is I'll check to see if they're orthogonal. And for that, I need the dot product. So I need the dot product of the two vectors. So I'm going to get 1 over root 5 times negative 2 over root 5 plus 2 over root 5 times 1 over root 5. All right, that gives me a what? That gives me negative 2 over the square root of 5. Uh, well, square root of 5 squared, which is just 5. Let's simplify that a little bit. And then 2 times 1 is 2 over 5. That gives me 0. Is that what I want? Yes, that's what I want. That means the two vectors are orthogonal. The next question is, are they normal? So if you want to find out whether these two vectors are normal, you need to find the magnitude of the vectors. So are they normal? Let's find the magnitude of the first. So I don't know, I'll call it u. It's going to be the square root of the first term squared. So when I square 1 over root 5, I get 1 fifth. Square 2 over root 5, I get 4 fifths. That gives me the square root of 1, which is 1. Yes. All right, let's look at the magnitude of vector v. That's going to be the square root of the first term squared, so 4 over 5 plus the second one squared, which is 1 over 5. Same answer, right? Square root of 1, which is 1. So they're orthogonal. They're normal. So yes, this is an orthonormal basis. All right, what would happen if I gave you a basis that was perpendicular, but it didn't have uh, vectors of magnitude 1? Well, then you would just divide by the magnitude. So if you were given perpendicular vectors that were not of magnitude 1, then just divide by the length or divide by the magnitude. All right, so in that first case, you had vectors that were of magnitude 1 and they were perpendicular, so therefore an orthonormal basis. Well, it turns out if you've got a set of non-zero vectors in an inner product space, then those vectors are linearly independent. So suppose you've got this set of vectors, right? This set of vectors, vector 1, vector 2, all the way through vector n, and these are orthogonal non-zero vectors. 
in an inner product space. Then the set S is linearly independent. All right, so there's another way to test for linear independence. If you have a set of vectors, you can see if they're all perpendicular. If so, then they're a basis. All right, let's look at another form that you might see these questions asked in. Suppose you had this case. I'll give you vector x in R2 as the vector negative 3, 4. And I'm going to give you this basis. I've got the square root of 5 over 5 and 2 root 5 over 5. So that's my first vector. And then the second vector in here is negative 2 root 5 over 5 and root 5 over 5. And my question is this. Find the coordinate matrix of x relative to the orthonormal basis B. Now, is this much different than before? Eh, similar. So the first thing is you're going to take the dot product of x with each of the vectors in b. Right, so the first step, take the dot product of x with each vector in the basis. So the first one will be negative 3, 4 dot root 5 over 5, 2 root 5 over 5. And that gives me what? Negative 3 square root of 5 over 5 plus 8 square root of 5 over 5, right? 4 times 2 is 8. Hey, look, common denominators, radicals are the same. I get 5 square root of 5 over 5, which is just square root of 5. All right, now let's do it for the second. Let's do negative 3, 4 dot negative 2 root 5 over 5, square root of 5 over 5. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And then I get 4 square root of 5 over 5. That gives me 10 square root of 5 over 5, 2 square root of 5. All right, from here, we're going to take the transpose. So step two, take the transpose. So instead of writing them down a column, I'm going to write them across. I'm going to write it as square root of 5, 2 square root of 5. Now, these two constants mean something. Right? These, this is your c sub 1. And this is your c sub 2. Try taking this linear combination. Try taking c1, v1 plus c2, v2. So let's take the square root of 5 times the first vector, which is root 5 over 5, 2 square root of 5 over 5, plus c2, v2. Well, c2, we just said, was 2 square root of 5. And the second vector was negative 2 root 5 over 5, square root of 5 over 5. All right, what does that give me? That gives me a 5 over 5, comma, 2 times 5 is 10, plus negative 4 times 5 is negative 20, 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, let's simplify this. Numbers work out nice. 1, 2 plus negative 4, 2 gives me negative 3, 4. Hey, 
Wasn't that thing the vector x that I originally had? So those c1s and c2s have a special name. We found two coefficients, and we wrote those vectors as a linear combination of those coefficients. These two coefficients here are called Fourier coefficients. And those were the coefficients that came out of the dot product that we found in advance and multiplied those out by the vectors. And those are your C1s and your C2s that make that statement true. Okay, so those Fourier coefficients are the basis. Now, here's the next big question. What happens if I'm given, I was already given vectors that were not of the same length, and I could just divide through by their magnitude, but they were originally perpendicular to each other. What happens if I'm given two vectors or more that are not perpendicular? How do I make them orthogonal? And for that, we need a process called Gram-Schmidt. Really, it's called the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process. But let's start out with an introduction as to what it is. Let's start with a coordinate axis and a couple of vectors. So here's vector v1, and here's vector v2. And right now, these vectors are not perpendicular. I want to take v1 and v2 v1 and v2 and make them unit vectors that are perpendicular to each other. And basically what that means is I'm going to need to change the basis because right now relative to the normal base uh, regular, relative to the standard basis they're not perpendicular. The normal part is easy to fix, right? Divide by the magnitude. But in order to get them to be perpendicular to each other, you're going to have to start looking at projections of one vector onto another that will basically take vector 2 and move it out until it becomes perpendicular to vector 1. Okay, and so for that, we're going to look at projections. So let's take a look at this example. I'll give you the example. I'll give you formulas. We'll run through some examples, and hopefully all will be okay. Let's start with this basis. When I do this, I'm going to keep the first vector as the vector that doesn't change and make the second vector then match the first vector. If you do it in the other order, you'll get a different answer. They'll still be perpendicular to each other, but if you want to make it easier for me to check lab answers and stuff like that and test answers, take the first one, make the second one match up with that. So my question is I want to find an orthonormal basis. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call the first vector 1, 1. The second vector, then, is the one that's going to have to change. So I'm going to call that v2, v1. So the, the second vector minus the projection of v2 on v1 will be that vector that I'm looking for. So it's going to be vector 2 minus, now if I want the projection of v2 on v1, I need the inner product v2, v1 over v1, v1 times v1. So remember that those inner products are coefficients, and then those coefficients get multiplied by v1. I'm going to slide this over on the side here so that maybe you can see it a little bit better. The inner product is going to be what? The v2, v1 is going to be written out as 0, 1, and 1, 1, which is what? 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1. On the bottom, v1, v1 is going to be 1, 1, dot 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. OK, so this gives me now v2, which is 0, 1, minus 
1 over 2, that's what I got from these inner products up here, times V1, which is 1, 1. So I get 0, 1 minus 1 half, 1 half. Well, 0 minus a half is negative 1 half, and 1 minus a half is positive 1 half. So I'm done with the first part. Right, the first part is I now have a vector that's perpendicular to 1, 1. The second part is now I need it to be of magnitude 1. So I need to make it a normal vector. So let's find the magnitude of that vector I have. So the square of 1 half is 1 fourth. Square of 1 half is 1 fourth. This gives me 2 fourths, which is 1 half. So 1 over the square root of 2. Now, if I want to find that unit vector, then just divide by the square root of 2. Well, dividing by the square root of 2, isn't that the same thing as or dividing by 1 over the square root of 2? Is the equivalent of multiplying by the square root of 2. So let's do that. Let's take the vector negative 1 half, 1 half. and divide by the magnitude. So instead of dividing by the 1 over the square root of 2, instead of having 1 over 1 over the square root of 2, why not just multiply by the square root of 2? So I get the negative square root of 2 over 2, and then square root of 2 over 2. Take this and the original vector and check. So take 1, 1 dot negative radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, and you'll see right away that you get 1 times the negative plus 1 times the positive. That dot product is 0. So that says they're perpendicular. This says that they're unit vectors. If they're perpendicular and they're unit vectors, then here is the orthonormal basis. The orthonormal basis still consists of two vectors. Right, those vectors are 1, 1. Well, no, because i got to normalize my original, my original vector. It's really 1 over the square root of 2. So 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. That was my original one. And now my new vector is negative root 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And that is my orthonormal basis. They're both of magnitude 1 and... If I take the dot product, the dot product is zero, meaning that they're perpendicular. All right, I'm going to do a second video with the examples from Graham Schmidt because I don't want this to get too long.